Good morning, America. You're listening to America's Voice Now. Our nation is at a crossroads, and we are in trouble. Not just because we are bankrupt financially, not just because we are bankrupt morally, but because we are bankrupt ethically, spiritually, financially, morally, and we are at a crossroads. Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction wants its white VISTA volunteers who work with low-income and racially diverse public schools to examine the privilege, this is their wording, not mine, that their Caucasian race confers on them. The Department of Public Instruction devotes an entire web page to the question of power and privilege and includes links to racial justice workshops and online testing where VISTA volunteers are able to, quote, learn about their personal bias. Excuse me? Are you out of your cotton-picking mind I don't have a bias, except against tirades and nonsense like this. One diversity document (laughs) suggests that white people should, and this is their quote, this is not my language, this is the absolute statement from their own mouth wear a white wristband as a reminder about your privilege and as a personal commitment to explain why you wear the wristband. This document was written by a diversity resource center in the state of New Jersey. And it goes on to suggest that white people should ask themselves these following questions. People, this would sound like a fiction novel, and it would almost be laughable if it were not true. These are the questions. How do I ignore my privilege? What am I doing today to undo my privilege? How do I fool myself into thinking I am powerless? How do I undo my privilege? You've got to be kidding me. I don't know. How do we undo the privilege? How do we undo the fact that we were born genetically white? Is that undoable? Ask yourself that question, you pencil-necked piece of trash. Suggestions from these idiots. Set aside sections of the day to critically examine how privilege is working. Put a note on your mirror or your computer screen as a reminder to think about your privilege. Make a daily list of the ways privilege played out and steps you've taken or not taken to address privilege. Find a person of color who is willing to hold you accountable for addressing privilege. Ladies and gentlemen, this is insane. This is reverse racism and self-conflagration 
burning yourself upon the altar of some collectivist, altruistic nonsense. The person who wrote this should be charged with hate speech, their favorite little game. I find this not deplorable, not disgusting. I'm not angry. I'm livid. I'm not livid. I'm volcanic! This is insanity! You were born white. You didn't choose it. It's not a privilege that's been bestowed upon you. And if you're so interested in what has been given to me by God and or God's and nature's God, then why don't you adhere to the Bill of Rights? You pathetic piece of trash. You should be absolutely ashamed of yourself. Whoever wrote this, whatever hapless, helpless, befuddled, pathetic ant wrote this, if they had any common sense, would be looking for a high bridge or a tall building right now. Let's, I mean, look, as far as I'm concerned, this is the most pathetic, abusive piece of trash I have ever seen. Demanding these people adhere to this type of abuse encouraged by a government, whether it's a state or a federal government. Because these, these people are all part of, guess what? AmeriCorps. What is AmeriCorps? AmeriCorps, and it's not just an Obama program, that is an organization that promotes Americans volunteering across the nation for their civic duty. This is brainwashing for millions. It shouldn't be discouraged. It should be banned. Just like racism is banned, this is the insistence and demand of self-hating reverse racism. Nothing more, nothing left. AmeriCorps, VISTA, Volunteers in Service to America. It's a national service program that is designed to fight poverty. <laughs> Are you going to tell me that because you're white and you're willing to, to provide volunteer services to those less fortunate, regardless and irrespective of their color, that you should be sitting here putting this nonsense into your head? Caller, you got a few seconds before the break. Okay. Fire away. Uh, volunteering? Vol America? Volunteering. Yeah, uh, to do civic work, is that right? That's it. Isn't that patriotic? One would think. Well, uh, I've been listening to this. There's not a whole lot of what you said about this article that really upsets me. Uh, I grew wow. Up in, I grew up in Mammoth Spring, Arkansas, and, uh, I never had the privilege of knowing anybody of a minority. There were no minorities at all in Mammoth when I grew up down there. And uh, I kind of regret that. I kind of wish I had well, the opportunity to be around some minorities. Well, um, in your case then, in, in your case then, you wouldn't have recognized that you had a special privilege. We're down to the last seconds. We're going to take well, a break, ladies and gentlemen. When we return... We can talk more about this. Call her if you want to hold. That's fine. I'm outraged, and you should be too. We'll be right back. I know what you're thinking, Bunk. You're thinking, did he fire six shots or only five? Dirty Harry gets all his ammo from the battery station. John Rambo, you guessed it.
he gets his ammo from the battery station too. So if you need ammo, go to the place where the guys who know about ammunition go, the battery station. They have one of the largest supplies of ammunition in the area. So make sure you're stocked up and don't get low on shells. Go to the battery station at 303 Washington Avenue in West Plains. When their five-year-old pestered them to let them play the game, Zombies vs. the Ninja, Greg and Sharon Kitchen's first instinct was to say, no, I don't think so, sweetie. Danny said he was offered the chance to buy more ammunition and more ammunition and more ammunition. Danny's game-playing session has cost the family... $2,500. Saturdays, noon to 3 for the Kim Commando Show on weekdays at 720 for your digital minute. That's Kim Commando on the Ozarks Best News Talk. We have reached the peak of insanity, stupidity, and altruistic self-destruction. I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't understand how one person can ask another person to burn themselves on the altar of altruism. Their website ends with a, or starts with a quote. The first problem for all of us, men and women, is not to learn but to unlearn. Gloria Steinem. You got to be kidding me. You consider Gloria Steinem some kind of parag- paragon of, of diversity? I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm beyond incensed. Go ahead, caller. Hello there. Hi. Um. I'd have to agree with you that this is a re- reverse racism. Uh, in fact, uh, I'd, I'd go out on a limb to say that that's pretty much what got uh, Obama reelected, or elected the first time, I mean. Uh, and I was guilty of it, too, the first time around. I uh, I voted for him not knowing anything about him because he was black. Um, and that was my mistake. Uh, I didn't make that same mistake twice, though. Uh, and... Uh, this just sounds like it's more of the same, you know. I mean, well, this is political. How many, how, how many hundred years ago was that? You know, it, this is political correctness run amok. Right. right. I mean, it's just this is sad. there's something wrong with this. Right. I mean, it's not right. even a question of. I, I don't think anyone who is intellectually honest can look at this and say that there's anything even remotely right about, first of all, the suggestion that you have the ability to change your color and that you were, I mean, just because you're white doesn't mean you're born into privilege. I can show you literally thousands upon thousands of families who are right here in Arkansas and and Missouri that are white and have no privilege. I'm living proof of that. So, I mean, this whole idea is, is just absolute hogwash trash as far as i'm concerned Agreed. and this thing is full of links what is privilege blog about issues that stem from privilege the ywca racial justice page racial justice page i mean this kind of thing uh, this this kind of stuff there's a video on here from a guy named tim wise who obviously does not follow his namesake used in the vista power and privilege training i mean there's an online test to learn about your own personal bias. Not to determine whether or not you have one, but to learn about the one they're telling you you have. Yeah, they just assume that you have one. I mean, Sad. it's one thing to say, check yourself and see if you have one. Right. It's another thing to say, just based on the color of your skin, you have one. I'm, I'm, I just, I'm telling you. Man, my blood pressure is skyrocketing today. This is just insane. And to think that Americans are literally walking around eating this trash and feeling as if this is giving them some kind of empowerment or benefiting anyone. This is more fracture that is, en- that is engendered by this administration to separate the wealthy from the poor, to separate the, the smart from the dumb, to separate the black from the white, the brown from the black, the brown from the white, this is just more separation, more divide and conquer. 
I'm telling you, this this is the worst president that we have had in our lifetimes, and it may well be the worst president that we have ever had in the history of the United States of America. This kind of thing, and, and listen, this stuff doesn't start from the bottom up. This is top-down realization of goals and, and, and determined objectives that this administration has. And it's not limited just to this group. You've got this running, running rampant through the Justice Department. It runs rampant through the legislative. It runs rampant through the executive. And it's being pummeled and poured down our throats like molten gold to solidify in our belly and poison us and burn us to death. Man. Okay, final words, caller. I'm going to give you the last word. Hey, uh, try to relax a little bit. <laughs> I know All right. it's hard. You have yourself hard. a great day. Thank you for your input. You I too, appreciate man. it. Go ahead, caller. Welcome to the show. Yeah, um, a, a friend of mine said that uh, her friend had a daughter in AmeriCorps, and she was saying that she was really worried about her because they won't let her, they don't let them call home once they're in there. They're completely um, separated from their family. They can't talk to their family. And it's almost like a cult. Um, and, and also, doesn't this kind of sound like when they made the Jews wear the, the armband? Doesn't it sound like the what? Pardon me? I, I, I missed what you... It, doesn't it sound like what with the armbands? Made the Jews wear an armband? Oh, yes. I see what you're saying. Right. In other words, yeah, you have to wear the uh, the gold star or the armband that indicates right. that you're a Jew, right, so that the public yeah. can be aware. Uh-huh. Uh, it, yeah. it does. It's a slightly different variant on it. But the right. whole the whole point of this is that they are indoctrinating our youth who go there with the, with the idea that by dedicating some time, some effort, some knowledge, that they can be a helpmate and a benefit to the rest of society who is less privileged. And it doesn't really matter whether it is privileged, you know. I mean, we're talking about going into communities and school systems where poverty is the real problem, not race. Right. Poverty right. and but ignorance, and, and, and when I say ignorance, I don't mean of an individual child. I'm talking about ignorance across the board that is, that is generational. Yeah, right. But doesn't it? Well, why would they not let them talk to their family? Because they're being, because they're being, because they're being indoctrinated and brainwashed. Right. That's why this is right. nothing but, more than you know these people who who go into cults and have to be deprogrammed in order right. to live a functional life. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. telling you, it, it, this is disgusting, and I'm this kind of thing is the this is hate speech. Any other way you name it is a lie. This is hate speech. Self-hate. Self-hate. Go ahead, caller. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. You know, it's surprising to me that uh, these times and that they allow stuff like that to be promoted when you try to promote something that's right and you put down. That's, that's the sad part of that. We'll, we'll clarify your your point. As far as as, as them being able to to uh, uh, put out about you know you being you know on the white band and and which is ridiculous you know them doing that anyway because you can't change the past. Just of like course, you said it's, it's, it's probably what we deal with race has nothing to do with it, and 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 what I always say being. Is the world classifies as as being African American, Black American, whatever they want to call it? I always classify myself as American. Absolutely. I was born, I was born in Chicago, raised in Oklahoma. I don't know nothing about over there. That's all I know is America. Of course. When how can I you call your How can you call yourself a descendant? We're all descendants from somewhere else. It's the That's nation right. of immigrants, right? Is that not yeah. our slogan? A nation of immigrants. But, I, but, but you don't see people walking around saying I'm Asian American or I'm Oriental American or I'm Chinese American or I'm, I'm Irish American or I'm French American or I'm Canadian American. That's an absurdity. And, and to utilize it as some sort of a, as a, you know, a disclaimer or a separator, it does exactly what it's intended to do. It separates. And separation is exactly the problem with all of this nonsense. 
That's right. And that and and that's <laughs> that's more promoting is is separation. That's that right there. You know, it's promote more separation. Like you say, when I fill out an application, I don't fill out uh, what uh, what my skin tone is. I fill out where I was born at, America. Right. They put other. I put. I I always uh, check other. <laughs> well, they don't put because they don't just have just American. Right. You got to be a Native American to be American. Exactly. <laughs> so, and, and, exactly. And like, exactly what they're promoting is another way of separation. Well, I, I'm, uh, you know, this YWCA page that they have a link to on this power and privilege thing, I'm telling you, follow the links on this story. It's on our Facebook page and our website. And I'm telling you, if you're not if you're not ready to explode by the end of reading all of this stuff, you you I I, I something's wrong with you. You got too many Valium in your system or something. It I'll says what, this, this, this says racial and restorative justice. Here's the problem. First of all, how are we, what is restorative justice? What the heck does that mean? That we're supposed to uh, that we're supposed to apologize for the mistakes of others who came hundreds of years before us? I mean, are, are we? <laughs> how, how far back are we going to go? Are we going to go back to the Romans who who invaded Gaul? That's I right. mean, come on, this is just no, an absurdity. We go back further than that, <laughs> right? You know, I mean, right? And the Egyptians who who you know, I, I mean, look, I, I'm just tired. We're not asking the Egyptians to pay homage and restore restorative uh, justice to to the to the uh, Jews, are we? Yeah. I mean, this whole thing is just insane. And I, I find it so frustrating. I can't even I can't even really begin to to you know quantify this concept of restorative justice. If you want to if you want to have real true restorative justice, we all got to move off the nation and give it back to the American Indian. That's right. That's right. I mean, you please. To, yeah, that that because we don't want everybody else than 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 came here from somewhere else. Right. <laughs> hey, well, listen. Thank you for the call. I appreciate your input. And thanks for listening, brother. All right, have a blessed one. All right, man, you too. Go ahead, caller. Uh, is our connection any better? I'm calling back. I'm the person from Mammoth Springs. Yes, sir, it is. Okay, good. So go ahead you're with your point. You didn't see something wrong with this. Well, I haven't yet. Um, I do have a question. Do you think there's not racism here? No, of course there's racism. I'm just saying well, I'm not going to burn myself on the altar because... There are some individuals who are racist, and there are other individuals who are not. And I'm not going to... If you don't turn the radio off, I'm going to shut you off. Okay, I will. I'm Bluetooth. It's what I'm on. Okay. The, the simple and truth is this. there are There is racism that does exist. But it doesn't mean that we're all supposed to turn around and, and, and destroy ourselves and destroy the fabric of our nation by living with that as this monolith around our necks that because it's been in the past that we now have to make all provision in the future for it. It just doesn't make sense. It, look, let me tell you something. The number of people who, since the 60s alone, this is probably the most racially diverse nation on the planet. There is no other, there is no other nation that has the kind of diversity and the kind of racial mix that exists in the United States of America. It, uh, there is no place on earth where you can find it. And if you want to see racism, go move to another country where you are not a natural-born citizen of that nation and then find out what racism is really all about. And I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell you something. This idea that we should be that we should feel as if because we were born white that we are that we are supposed to for some reason or other throw ourselves, burn ourselves to death so that someone else can feel better about who and what they are is absolute insanity. Well, I, under, I understand that. Uh, uh, I, All right, spend wait, time, I spend a lot of time down in Arkansas, and uh, it's terrible how they talk about minorities that Folks, we're going to take a break. When we return, we'll take uh, other calls on this issue. We'll be back in just a minute. You're listening to America's Voice now. Fox News Radio. I'm Chris Foster. The new Pope, Francis, starts the day praying at Rome's major church dedicated to St. Mary. 
Soon, it's mass at the Sistine Chapel, where he was elected. He then stopped in the main office, greeted everyone, and decided to pay the bill for his room that he had been occupying for the past few weeks. Vatican spokesman Father Thomas Rosica. It's known as the God Particle. Scientists at the European Organization for Nuclear Research saying they are now confident that last year's discovery of a crucial subatomic particle is indeed a version of the subatomic particle called Higgs boson, considered the missing cornerstone of physics and would explain why matter has mass. Fox News Radio's Courtney Keeley. Los Angeles Lakers guard Kobe Bryant's out for the foreseeable future with a severe ankle sprain hurting the team's playoff chances. Fox News, we report, you decide. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Withstand Classic Barbershop, who is the sponsor of our telephone lines this morning. They're located on the square in West Plains. It's Wits End Classic Barbershop. Thanks to our friends over at West Plains Pawn and Gun. You can find them on the web at westplainspawn.com. They can be reached at 417-256-3000, and they're located on Route 160, about a mile past Walmart, on the right-hand side. 400 guns undercover. Pizza Hut, our friends down there on Porter Wagoner Boulevard. They have an outstanding lunch menu uh, with salad, pizza, and pasta. Excellent opportunity for you to have a great lunch and eat well and something tasty. Our friends over at the Battery Station at 303 Washington Avenue. You can find them on the web at batterystation.com. Telephone 417-257-7799. Our friends over at Ozark Mountain Self-Reliance can be found on the web at ozarkmtnselfreliance.com. My friend Brian there can be reached at 870-492-4030. They're located a half mile east of Walmart at 3225 Route 62, Mountain Home. My friend Mary over at Chantilly's Artisan Bakery, the best damn bakery in 100 miles. She's right off the square on in West Plains at 2 Evans Arcade, and you can reach her at 255-2253. And my friend Bill Stone over at Stone Construction. If you're considering doing remodeling, custom or new construction, or anything like commercial, give Bill a call and have him bid on your project at 293-0116. Miller Accounting is preparing tax returns and offering refund transfers for their clients. Their goal? Prepare your tax return timely, accurately, and confidentially in a stress-free environment. Get your refund by direct deposit, check, or debit card. Call 417-934-6132. Mention this station's call letters and receive $10 off. Caution, this offer will self-destruct April 15th. Weather is a service of News Talk 1071 The Point. Contact Josh or Cody at 255-2548 for more information on making weather sponsorships part of your marketing plans. From the Point Weather Center for this morning, we'll have a mainly clear sky, mostly sunny through the day, high 66, mainly clear tonight, not as cold as last night, low 40. Mostly sunny tomorrow, high 74, partly sunny skies on Saturday, high 64, some showers Sunday. I'm staff hydrologist Jim Rinaldi, and for more information, visit my1071thepoint.com. The area's best selection of firearms, ammunition, and accessories can only be found at West Plains Pawn and Jewelry. Online at westplainspawn.com. Top of the line, new and used optics from Nikon, Leopold, Burris, Redfield, Zeiss, and Schmidt and Bender. Ask about their selection of binoculars, laser sights, and night vision goggles. With new arrivals every week, the area's best selection of firearms, ammunition, and accessories can only be found at West Plains Pawn and Jewelry. 1713 West U.S. Highway 160 or shop online at westplainspawn.com. The whole idea that we are obligated to pay for the sins of the father, who, by the way, isn't the father, it's the grand, great, 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 great grandfather, is just ridiculous. And I am, I'm, I'm not willing to accede to that argument in any way, shape, or form. I didn't, I didn't enslave anyone. I didn't keep anyone against their will. I didn't force someone to work. And we're all enslaved by a government that absolutely feels that the chains are called debt and taxation and abuse. Go ahead, caller. Welcome to the show. Uh, Yes, I think that the only way to get rid of racism is to um, get it in people's head that we're all equal, not that 
one is more privileged than another. That, that yeah, but see, that's the whole argument for reverse racism is that because things weren't equal for a long time, we're all supposed to now take a lower status and, 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 and throw ourselves on this burning altar in an effort to try to make these people feel better about the fact that they were uh, abused at some point in the past. And not even them, but their parents' parents' right. parents. I mean, it's they, insane. They've never been slaves. They've never been slaves. I mean, you know, even the Bible tells us you can't hold the child responsible for the sins of the father. Right. I mean, yeah. this is just insanity. And, and, and I'm tired of it. I'm tired of this political uh, double-talk diatribe. It's What this is, is read 1984. This is the exact political doublespeak, which they, which they refer to in that book. It's, this is all the concept of indoctrinating you. If, you know, look, you remember the old phrase, if you tell a lie often enough, even you begin to believe it? Well, the same holds true. If you read a lie, study a lie, practice a lie long enough, it becomes the truth. And that's exactly what this is. This is a national lie. And I, for one, have had it. All right, thank you. My phone lines are just smoking this morning because I'm obviously not the only one. Thank you, dear, for the call. Go ahead, caller. Welcome to the show. Yes, I have two, two things. One is about something I read in the book, and the other is about what we fill out every time we fill out a form. Are you white? Are you cock- yeah. Are you black? Those should stop being put on anything that we fill out. Because they have no business knowing how we're diverse. We're just Amer- right in American. Well, it, it, it's it's diametrically opposed to the principle of a united melting pot when right. you constantly remind everybody that we're not exactly all the same. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with not all being the same. Nope, there isn't. I, you know. And the other thing, I, I, a book I read recently, it wasn't identified as AmeriCorp. But it was identified as the government assimilating 11 to 17-year-olds and 18 to 24-year-olds, and they were not allowed to communicate with their parents because their parents had religious values and opinions, and the children were not allowed to contact them after they were in the group. It would be the same thing. Go ask any kid who grew up in Nazi Germany. Mm-hmm. And they'll tell you that that's, that was one of the first planks of the Hitler youth was don't allow the children to communicate back with their families and teach the children that your parents are stupid and you're the wise one. And I'm going to tell you something, and I'm going to, I'm going to let you go because I'm going to take the last word on this point. Okay. Our commercials are full of this kind of nonsense and diatribe. Have you ever noticed how on the television, which is a brainwashing indoctrination machine, that every kid is intelligent and the parents are stupid, and if it wasn't for the kids showing them how to operate a phone or t- uh, some social issue or whatever the case may be, that those helpless, hapless, stupid, idiotic parents wouldn't be able to do it. You know, I'm, this is the kind of thing where they are burning this nonsense into our minds, and day in and day out, it does have an effect. Go ahead, caller, quickly now, because I've got a jamming phone line. Um, yes, sir, there was just a few things I wanted to say. Number one is... I had taken that self-defense course of Mr. Arthur Thomas, and it was wonderful. It's very informative, and I would advise anybody to take it. Excellent. Uh, the second one is uh, race and religion has been a tactic, a tactic of our government for years to keep the American people from really realizing what's at hand. And the third one, I'm proud to be white, and I'm not ashamed of it, and I'm proud of my heritage and my ancestors. Thank you. Thank you. And you know what? We have a right to be. So do they. They have a right to be proud of their heritage and ancestry as well. You know, constantly telling people that because you're black, you're you're you have a a a a lack of privilege is is just as damaging. I mean, it's it's self it's constantly instilling in them that they have some that they're lacking something. Yes. Thank you so much for the call. I appreciate you. And I'm glad you took that course from our Thomas. That that is a good program. Yes, it is. You learn a lot. And, and he, he really works with you to make sure that you understand everything about the course and how to preserve your own life if you're ever in that situation. Hey, great. And, and yeah, I, I'm thank you very much for the call. I appreciate you. All, All right, right. You have a nice you. day. Go ahead, caller. Go ahead, caller. Quickly now. we got a break coming up. Oh, go, go ahead. No, nope, it's all right. you got a minute. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, uh, you know what? What? infuses that that type of thing too is a uh, reason why they have the different uh races on that stuff is because you have certain races that they want to be treated different which i've never 
looked at it that way, been like that myself, but that's what's wrong with it. And then on the other side, remember the, uh, what was that, Three Acres and a Mule? What was the what now? I think it was, uh, what is it, Three Acres and a Mule or Ten Acres and a Mule, something like that, that they was wanting. I'm not f- familiar. This was, uh, it's been a while back. It's, oh, uh, I know what you're talking uh, about. Yeah, there was like an old promise from the from the pre-Civil War yeah. days or something. Yeah, okay. Yeah. See, that kind of stuff like that. That fuels that kind of stuff. Right. Well, it makes you know, people want to feel like, you know, you're responsible. Well, uh, and on top of that, that it's constant. Stuff. It's, now, that's stupid. <laughs> every time you talk about racial and restorative justice, right, you know what that does? That tells the person right. of color that they are inferior. It's reinforcing yep. their inferiority, yep. even if they... Right. Sh- and, and half the time, the truth is, they shouldn't even feel inferior. I mean, right. there's nothing... There's no claim to inferiority just because you're not white. I don't get it. That's insane. And I, I get it. I'm, I'm, I am white, so I don't... I, but you know what? The truth of the matter is, if you weren't constantly pumping, pumping the concept into people of color that they are inferior, they wouldn't feel that they were. Right, you're a product of your environment. Absolutely, and you want to know something? You want to look at you want to look at a guy who who's a perfect example of that. That Dr. Carson. Have you ever heard that Dr. Ben Carson? He's the guy who's the the uh, neurosurgeon, the um, uh, uh, child neurosurgeon out of Maryland. He's the guy who spoke at that prayer breakfast with Obama. Now here's a guy. Yeah, I heard about that. Here's a guy. Oh, oh, I'm telling you, go find him on YouTube and watch that video. It'll blow your mind. Here's a guy who grew up at, at, with, with 13 children in his home and a single mother who couldn't read. And you know what she did? She made them do book reports and pretended to read them and even put marks on the page like she was finding mistakes. And, and they, she was fooling them. And they never even knew it because they didn't know mom couldn't read. <laughs> now, here's a, guy, here's a guy who grew up in the worst of circumstances and he's a neurosurgeon. He's a brain surgeon. I mean, we all joke about what that. What are you, a brain surgeon or a rocket, a rocket scientist? He yeah. is truly a brain surgeon. And you know something? The guy has, I mean, he has risen above what could have been the ultimate destruction of his life. And you know how he did it? By determination, by reading, by educating himself, and recognizing that his individual climb in, in, in his personal life is based only on what he does, not on what someone else does. Stop focusing being, on the external and focus on the internal. Not becoming part of the system. Absolutely, but also recognizes recognize that what your capabilities are are only limited by how you view yourself. That's right. That's, That's the simple you. truth. Not, yeah. You know, there's an old That's saying right. that they used to say in some of these brainwashing seminars, and this one holds true. If it's going to be, it's up to me. Yep. It is. If you're going to rise above, you're going to have to overlook the circumstances under which you, are, which you are, are born with. And I have to tell you something. You know, I had a fellow, Jerry Jacobs from uh, KY3, t- told me one day, um, you know, I, I feel like I have been born in the United States. And that, if you look at it from a birthright perspective, is, is like winning the lottery. Because he, I, his comment was, I've been all over the world and I see how people live everywhere else. And just being born in the United States is winning the lottery. I mean, the life lottery, right? And yeah. Yeah. that, you know, no matter how bad our circumstances are, even the poorest of us live like kings compared to the rest of the world. I mean, we all have a refrigerator. We all have air conditioning, or at least the vast majority of us does. I mean, I get there's a few who don't. But, you know, we all have the ability to get educated and not have to worry about being fired at like that little girl in, in, you know, who was shot at by the Taliban just because she wanted to go to school. She got shot in the head. I mean, yeah. the whole argument and idea behind the fact that we have to make up, you know, some kind of additional privilege for ourselves when we are born winning the lottery is insane. Yeah, I get it. Born in a privileged country. You know what we're doing though? We're like the people who win the lottery and spend it all in a couple of years, and then find ourselves bankrupt five years later with nothing to show for it. That's our generation, and I'm ashamed that we have allowed ourselves to fall to that level. We got to take a break. Hey, thank you for your call. I appreciate you. All right. 
folks, we're going to take a break. When we return, I, I didn't mean to spend the entire uh, episode or show on this issue, because, uh, but I have to admit, and obviously you listeners are, are interested in chatting about this. We'll be right back. Hi, it's Hugh Hewitt on the next Hugh Hewitt Show. I am back, and I am happy to bring you up to speed as we loom closer and closer to the sequestration as the Cardinals begin to gather in Rome, as all sorts of news from around the world collects. I will be your Sherpa through that complexity all on the next You Do It Show. Sundays from 6 till 7, following Money Talk with Bob Brinker, it's the Weekend Journal with Hugh Hewitt on the Ozarks Best News Talk 107.1. Family Fun and Fitness, LLC, presents rape and assault prevention classes at Country Covered in Licking, Missouri. Men, women, boys, and girls, if you want to know how to stack the deck in your favor in a situation where violence is the only answer, this class is for you. Rape and assault prevention classes are held Monday evenings at 5.30 beginning February 11th and run through March 18th. Class size is limited, so call today, 417-260-1006, or register at Country Covered, 217 North Highway 63 in Licking. There's one man on this earth who really, truly gets it. Health insurance today is not taxed. Obamacare taxes it. It doesn't tax you, it taxes the provider. The provider cannot swallow $100 billion in new taxes. But Obama and his law seek to conceal this from you. So already there's upward pressure on your policies because of all the freebies that are going to be handed out. Weeknights from 5 till 8, Mark Levin on the Ozarks Best News Talk 107.1. Another year older, another birthday blood. Not when you're listening to the Birthday Club here on 1071, the point each morning during the morning show. Proudly presented by Ryan's Family Restaurant. Call in your loved ones, your mom, dad, grandma, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, nieces, whoever, for their chance to be the winner of a great buffet and drink from Ryan's Family Restaurant. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you from 1071, the point and Ryan's Family Restaurant. Okay, um, we're going to take one or two more calls, and then I've got... I, I didn't mean to spend the entire uh, show on this particular issue, but it, it's its obviously struck a key not only with myself, but a lot of other listeners as well. Go ahead, caller. Hello? You Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Hello? You're on the air, caller. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I, I had a couple of points. Uh, my mom, you were talking about the gentleman that was the neurosurgeon and stuff. Uh, my mother, um, her dad died when he was 52 and left her to uh, make a living. She was 13 years old for her mother, nine brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. um, she only had an eighth grade, well, not even a whole eighth grade education. And um, she she took care of a business for a gentleman up here and there. His name was Jess Carroll, and she ran his feed store. She did his books. Um, you know, she went on to have her own business. They had a flower shop for years and stuff. Daddy went on after he came back from the war and stuff and, and uh, got a job on the railroad and stuff. And we, we had a decent living at our house, you know, and stuff. We They started poor. I mean, just about as dirt poor as you could be and stuff. But they had the initiative to go ahead and, and make something out of themselves. And I did labor and delivery for 17 years up here at an area hospital. And just for your information, for those of us, uh, us that don't know this, those black babies start out white. When they're born, their skin is white. The longer they're in the atmosphere and in the world, why that pigmentation takes over and stuff then. But every black baby is born white. Well, <clears throat> I, 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 you're an expert on that. I'm not. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I've seen a couple of babies born because I got a few of them, but I, I can't really speak to the to the other issue. <laughs> um, I, but you're absolutely right. Listen, this is just a factor and, a, and an issue of us of us overcoming our circumstances, irrespective yeah. of what color we are. And exactly. you know, your your situation or your mom's situation sounds very similar to what Carson, that Dr. Ben Carson, was saying because his mother was 13 years old and she had her first child. Right? Yeah. I mean, and and you know, she had I don't know what it was, nine or 13. I don't even remember anymore. I'm so flustered right now. I can't even think straight. But <laughs> You know, the simple truth is that anyone and everyone can overcome their circumstances of birth. And whether that's good or bad. You know, we see lots of folks who are born into very privileged families who are absolute wastes of genetic material. 
right? Just like we see lots of people come out of poor families that are a waste of genetic material. There is, you know, but anyone can overcome their their inability to to be or you know the 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 simple fact that they're born into a into poverty or born into a family of color or born into uh, a ser- situation where they are born with a genetic disease or i mean listen how many it, it, it's it's not this is not a question of a racial issue and it's not a question of a national issue this is really simply a function of individuals who like andrew jackson said grab yourself by the bootstraps pull yourself up and move on and did you know that Andrew Jackson w- entered the entered the war in eighteen in in uh, at the age of uh, thirteen? He was taken a prisoner of war by the British. He was slashed across the back. Him and his brother. His two brothers were killed, and he was orphaned by the time he was fourteen years old. He went on to become a statesman and the president of the United States of America. Don't tell me you can't overcome the circumstances of your environment. I don't buy it. He, well, he was he was left alone adrift. His father died before he was actually born. He was left alone adrift in a nation where, as an orphan at 14 years old. I mean, I'm just using that as one example because it's it's. I just read it the other day as kind of a story about him. But the simple truth is this: we've seen literally millions upon millions of people who came out of 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 uncomfortable or or difficult circumstances in the environment in which they were born and they succeeded but they didn't succeed because they were taught to be a victim they succeeded because they were unwilling to be a victim that's and exactly, that's all the difference that's exactly right you know that david ring that's a, a preacher you know and stuff born with cerebral palsy a lot of people would just sit down and say oh poor me you know send me my check and stuff like that the man has millions of watchers and stuff. He preaches and, and he sings and stuff because he had willpower. There you go. Well, listen, thank you for the call. I appreciate you. you. You have yourself a great day. Thanks for okay, listening. You, you know, here, here's what it comes down to, people. You can sit and wallow in your misery and become a dependent uh, um, a ward of the state, which is exactly what this government wants. It wants to preach the concept to you and it wants you to be a firm believer that you are powerless that everything is not your fault that you are not responsible for your own actions that you are not responsible for your own for your own failings and that you can always point the finger at someone else because that plays right into the hands of the average person's ability to rationalize off their inabilities or their their unwillingness to move forward in their life it's easy to point the finger at someone else and say i'm a failure because of them that's not true it's never been true and it's never going to be true if you're a failure it's because you've made decisions that were poor end of argument and i don't care what color you are i don't care what your financial circumstances were i don't care what your environmental circumstances are in fact the only environmental circumstance for which I have any pity whatsoever is when a child is raped or as a, as a function of incest or abused. Outside of that, there are, and even those people, how many of them have risen to success in their own lives by whatever measure they mark that? There is no inherent deficit in your life just because you're born brown or you're born black or you're born yellow skinned. That is an absolute shameful uh, principle to be educating and pushing into people's minds. And I'm telling you that the whole principle about that is simply this. Dumb down America. Dumb down these people and make them feel as if they are they are creatures of slave of slavery, that they are powerless and that they don't have the wherewithal and the ability to separate themselves and rise above. They don't want individuals. They want a collective and by playing into this nonsense and, and, and this insanity, you are giving them exactly what they want. They want you to be a quiet member of the collective. There are no individuals. There are only this group, this social, formless, shapeless, mindless mass, all dependent upon their, their elitist leaders. And I'm telling you, that is what this is all about. It has nothing to do with restorative justice or any of these other lies. What this is, is intellectually dishonest people who are fooling themselves and enriching themselves by writing this kind of crap and then selling it to the government for big bucks.
That's what it is. And you know what that is? You know what that is? By people of color who actually participate in this, it's called treason to yourself and your own race. And you, you who participate in this, you are guilty of treason. You are guilty of treason against yourself. You are guilty of treason against your race. And you are guilty of treason against humankind. And you should be ashamed of yourself. You want to check yourself in the mirror? Forget the little white card that says I'm white and I should remind myself why I'm not as good as someone else. What you should have on there is a little card that says, today I guarantee, today I promise, today I ensure I will not be guilty of self or national treason or racial treason. That's the kind of sticker you want on your mirror. Oh, man. All right. Before we wrap the show, I've got to uh, hit these bullet points. Um, The reloading class for the 30th of March. That's going to be held right here in West Plains. It's going to be in the Eastgate Plaza that is down in uh, on on Bill Verdon Boulevard, uh, just down before you get to 63 Business. It's near the Catholic Church there. It's a strip mall there, and that's where it's going to be held. It's on the 30th. If you intend to take this reloading class, it's $100. You'll have, at the end of this program, you'll have a full education of exactly what you need to do to start reloading metallic cartridges. Based on, on where we stand and how the government is, is sucking the market dry by purchasing billions upon billions of rounds, this would be a, a very, very valuable skill for you to have. And reloading is not the kind of thing where you can kind of learn as you go. You really need somebody to teach you so that you do it safely. Please send me an email with reloading in this, or reload or whatever you want to say in the subject line just so I know what it's about and we'll get the details to you. It's going to be on the 30th. It's $100. I need you to give me an absolute confirmation so I know exactly how many tables and chairs and all of that. Don't, don't just send and make sure you give me a phone number to contact you back. I don't want to just do this through email. It, we're, we're down to the wire on it. Same thing with our TAC-1 class that's going to be held on the 23rd. By the way, for those of you who are interested, there is going to be a women's only class on there. So if you're uncomfortable about, you know, being around a bunch of testosterone-fueled men while you learn, um, there's a solution for you. You have an opportunity. By the way, women are far better shooters than men because they don't have all that macho crap going on in the back of their head. They're not interested in how they look and trying to look like somebody on, in Hollywood. They're more interested in actually accomplishing the task, which is hitting the bullseye. So, um, women, if you're interested in that TAC-1 class, there is a ladies-only class. I strongly encourage you to take it. I also encourage you to take it with your husband, who can take it also. But um, this way, you can check yourselves against what you've both learned. You can practice together. You can encourage each other. You can remind each other, hey, wait a second, we're supposed to grip this way or that way or stand this way or whatever the case may be. It's an invaluable class. It's $175, which is an absolute giveaway for a two-day class where you are going to learn invaluable skills. And um, I, I, I defy you to find that kind of pricing structure anywhere else where you're going to be able to fire somewhere between 750 and 800 rounds of ammunition and learn all the skills necessary to be able to handle a defensive uh, pistol course. You're never going to find it anywhere. Make sure that you send me an email on, on TAC-1 or reload. The TAC-1 course is the 23rd and the 24th. That's this uh, Saturday coming up. And it's absolutely imperative that I hear from you immediately, if not sooner. Uh, we're, ru- we're running out of time in reference to this uh, program, and I've got to have a confirmation from you, and uh, I'll get you all the details. That's going to be held here in West Plains as well. Please try to take it as a couple if you can. Okay, you can find us on americasvoicenow.org. You can find us on facebook.com forward slash America's Voice Now, where all of these stories are posted, including this idiocy today we talked about. And you'll be able to find this and every other show that we do on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash America's Voice Now. I encourage you to share this video with your friends and wake America up to the treason that is being perpetrated on us. Have a great day. News Talk for Missouri and Arkansas, 107.1 KBMV. Birch Tree West Plains, The Point. Fox News Radio on Lisa Brady. He was the runner-up in Pope Benedict's election. That stuff is not...